when I went over to my friend's house for dinner, it would amaze me that they wouldn't eat rice. You know, in, in my household, we had rice almost every day. You, you're having rice and chicken, rice and meat, rice and vegetables, or noodles, but rice. And like, you know, I would feel, I remember feeling a little bit embarrassed <laughs> when I would go to other people's house and be like, so <laughs> where's the rice? <laughs> All right, rolling. Sound. First generation teaser, take one. Is there a specific um, incident that kind of reminded you that you were from somewhere else, that you were the other? I was picked on for a long time. When I first came to this country, I had a thick Nigerian accent, um, but I wanted to be friends with people. They didn't want to be friends back. So I was like, why don't you people play with me? And they were like, because you sound like that. And when you're young, you do not want to be different. You know, like that is the number one thing you're trying to not be. When we moved from Haiti to the United States, the cultures pretty much clashed a lot because uh, there's just certain things that you just don't do. Um, you, you just you just don't. Um, I'm a talker and I talk a lot in class and I remember one day my mom walking into the class telling my teacher, don't be afraid to whoop her if she continues to talk. Definitely this was something that you know normally happens in my household, but it's like, mom, you can't do that, not in a classroom. I grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is like the whitest part of America possible. We, I had one other Asian kid. I think at first, you know, when I was living in the dorms, the, the culture shock really like hit me. At school, you know, at school, I kind of always felt different. And I couldn't say my B's back then either. I was just desperately trying to hang up as many NSYNC posters in my room as possible. You know, people there are, are white people. And and then there was me. Brown, short, black hair, Asian girl. I was the kid that didn't have a lot of friends. So I would legit talk to myself. And that's actually why I got such good grades. Like when you don't have friends, all you do is read and get straight A's. Like, you can't not have friends and be failing in school. My friends make fun of me because they say I'm waspy. They want me to be more, more different than I am. So it was kind of a weird thing for me. What's really cool that like, you know, my mom makes samosas now, like to my friends in their 20s, but like when we were like eight or 10, you know, like that was not like super cool for that to be the after school snack. I guess I look at it, but I guess I didn't really feel I was ethnic enough. In sixth grade, there was like this uh, assignment that the whole class had where we had to bring in a recipe from home and like it was like a potluck lunch that everybody was bringing in like their mom's favorite recipe and you know what everybody normally eats at home and I was like the only one that had any kind of ethnic food. And like I was the only one who like went home with a completely full tray, like nobody tried any, the, like even like a bite of it, everyone was super weirded out by it. Now I can like laugh about it and be like, they missed out. When my friends came to pick me up, we were going out. I was gonna leave for that long and um, my dad said goodbye to me. He was like, oh yeah, bitch, bye. So I leave and I'm gone for maybe a couple hours and I come back with my friends and uh, <laughs> the excitement that my dad came out like as if I was gone for years. He just came out and he's like, bitch you, bitch you, bitch you is back. And I'm sitting there like, uh, my friends are like, um, okay, what's, what's going on? You were just gone two hours. My father's a big martial arts guy. That's always been a part of my life, is karate. <laughs> Bruce Lee, watching Bruce Lee, watching Chuck Norris, and learning how to punch, learning how to kick, you know? I don't know what other people's life was like, but as a little girl, I had to punch my dad and kick my dad. Like, growing up, anytime we had an ailment or a sickness, like, they didn't want to buy Tylenol or NyQuil. You know, Haitians have like remedies and stuff like that. It's like, no, no, you don't take that. You have to rub this leaf around your, li your, your, your arm. Grind up some garlic or take some cod liver oil pills. And I'm like, ugh, this is nasty. I have like the fish burp or something when I go to school just because I wasn't feeling well. And I'm like, mom, I need some real medicine, not some leaf that we don't even have here. This is weird. Can I just take Tylenol? Can I take some cold medicine and go to sleep? I came here when I was 16, medical school in mind. So college, medical school, residency, job. I do feel more comfortable living in the US now rather than going back and living in Sri Lanka. It's kind of strange to say that. Even though I tried to whitewash myself, had the Abercrombie, had the chains, had everything, I was like a skater girl, and it just didn't work. I think if you don't fit a certain mold that people expect of you, they kind of either diminish your legitimacy, either you're not ethnic enough, you're not black enough, you're not this enough. No matter how, you can tr how much you can try to assimilate, like it doesn't matter at the end of the day. You have to find out what's unique about the culture for yourself to fit in.